This video is sponsored by Squarespace, a great all-in-one platform if you want to start a website or do whatever you want to do, just follow your dreams and have some fun! Hey everybody! So, the theming and ideology of The Lion King is really weird, and weird in some ways that I think are kinda obvious. Like, at the very beginning of the film, when we watch Mufasa teach a young Simba about nature, he says this, As king, you need to understand that balance and respect all the creatures, from the crawling ant to the leaping antelope. But Dad, don't we eat the antelope? Yes, Simba, but let me explain. When we die, our bodies become the grass, and the antelope eat the grass. And so, we are all connected in the great circle of life. And, you know, he's just lying right there. Lying right to his son's face. Imagine you were a gazelle, and Mufasa gave this little speech to you. What would your reaction be? Well, I for one would be pretty skeptical. No, I think I'll pass on the whole you eating me thing. I mean, thanks for the grass when you die, I do love grass, but as it turns out, when gazelles die, we also turn into grass. So you don't even have to hunt and eat me. That's fine, don't worry about it. See, that's the thing, right? In lived experience, there is no circle of life. There's a food chain, and lions are at the top of that chain. They don't help gazelles, who are basically just people within this story. They actually eat them. And looking at this scene, all we're watching is a guy making up a story that frames him having all the power and wielding it brutally in a positive light. No, it's good that I eat people. They love that. And if you've ever seen The Lion King, you know that this scene isn't just some throwaway gag. The hilarious part where the lion man indoctrinates his son. No, it's the thematic centerpiece of the entire movie. Which is about celebrating and upholding the power of a bunch of parasitic weirdos. What's this mean lion doing? He doesn't have a claim to the lion throne. Mufasa or his son should be in charge. I mean, they're the ones who are kind and knowledgeable enough to let their corpses turn to grass when they die. Wait, what the hell? This guy's letting the hyenas in our kingdom? Those guys aren't even lions. Why should they get to eat our people who naturally belong to us? And honestly, if we're being real right now, I think the mean lion and his hyena friends are maybe fascists. Look how they march. Those guys are up to no good. Trying to eat and stuff. Uh, so why am I saying all this? Am I truly mad at this movie? Well, no. The Lion King objectively slaps. It slaps my entire bod. And if any movie could radicalize me to the far right, it would be this one. The truth is that even though I was always aware that this film carried some questionable ideas, none of that stuff ever really mattered to me. That is, until I saw the 2019 remake, a film that works on every level to direct the audience's attention to how strange and screwed up this whole story really is. So let's talk about it. The first thing we have to talk about when looking at The Lion King 2019 is the film's aesthetic. A lot has already been made of how the realistic look of this movie fails to capture the magic of the original film. You know, you watch the original with its expressive and gorgeous animation, and then you watch this and it blows chunks. Look at them, just walking around, awkwardly opening up their animal lips to say lines that genuinely don't feel like they're coming out of their mouths. Um, uh, um, um. It sucks, a lot. But what I don't see people talking about is the way that this aesthetic shift alters the thematic center of the film. Okay, uh, let me ask a question. Besides looking cool, what does the aesthetic of the 1994 Lion King accomplish? What does it say about the world it's depicting? Well, I think the answer to this is pretty simple. 
It's an art style that reminds us of the beauty of power. From the first moments of the film, every shot of the Pride Lands focuses our attention on the ways that nature itself is deeply concerned with this kingdom and with the goodness of Mufasa's reign. The low-angle shots of the monarch and his child that highlight the magnitude of their power. The splashes of color as Simba sings about being king. The way that all the animals congregate around and celebrate him. The sinister image of Scar ascending over his hyena army, juxtaposing the serenity of the Pride Lands with what feels like an impossibly big threat. The sweep of the gazelles stampeding as Mufasa falls into them. What could be more epic and tragic than this? In this way, our engagement with the worlds of the Lion King is constantly mediated by a cinematic language that justifies the prevailing order of power within the film, presents it as natural, great, important, worthy of defending. And if we asked, why is it that we want so badly for Simba to win, I think a reasonable answer would be, because his winning literally paints the more beautiful picture. Now, to some extent, we might be able to say the same thing about The Lion King 2019. After all, the film does take an enormous number of aesthetic cues from its source material. But we can't just ignore the main reason why this film exists in the first place. It wants to be The Lion King, but in real life, with real lions. And it would be silly to say that that choice carries no meaning whatsoever. I don't know if what I'm about to say will be a universal experience for people who watch this film, but for me, the decision to go with a photorealistic aesthetic forced me to question some of the ideas that the original Lion King assumed. For one thing, having every character in the movie be painted with this objective-feeling, naturalistic brush made it harder for me to accept the moments when animals acted completely unnaturally, embraced and accepted power structures that they never would in real life. Maybe it sounds stupid to you, but when I watched this opening scene where all the animals freak out about how great this new lion prince is, I got tingles because it felt so extremely wrong to me. What are these gazelles so dang happy about? The birth of this creature that fully intends to consume them? All I felt was pity for these poor creatures, lambs to the slaughter. And I didn't have that reaction to the original because these guys aren't really animals, are they? They just feel like people, excited about their new king. There's something there that I can relate to in a way that goes beyond the relationship between predator and prey. But in the even cold light of the new film, all that majesty disappears, and I'm left just thinking about the awful material reality behind this scene. For another example, we can look at how the film depicts hyenas. In the original, we have a great sense that these guys are just evil. The three of them that we meet always have a sinister posture, and behind them is this faceless mass, a number of hyenas that the audience can only contextualize as an army, there to take away everything good in the world. <laughs> In the new one, though, they're kind of just hyenas, and at their most, there's like 15 of them on screen. And sure, hyenas are less aesthetically pleasing than lions are, but this can only take me so far. At the end of the day, I fully recognize that hyenas are just cute dogs who love to eat big dinner. They need food, you know? Who am I to stop them? Trying to understand these boys as evil just feels really wrong to me. And so the idea that defeating them is this epic important thing just falls flat. And honestly, I could go through a bunch more examples of this. Compared to the original, the 2019 remake is so brutally realistic that I couldn't help but engage with it in a more realistic way. And ultimately, I don't care what these lions do, because the film's aesthetic is utterly incapable of selling the idea that I should care, that Simba's claim to the throne is meaningful, that the throne as this natural entity actually exists in the first place. 
But if this was the only problem with the new Lion King, I think I could move past it. Okay, the movie doesn't look right. The aesthetic sometimes makes me feel strange and bad, and fails to convey some of the ideas that make the movie work on a conceptual level. But fine, the story is still intact, and it gets the message across. The current hierarchy is good and natural, and those that come to disturb it are villains. But here's the thing. Even as the story of The New Lion King stays pretty true to its source material, the filmmakers do change some small things, particularly when it comes to the villains of the story. And although subtle, these changes only work to bring our attention to how strange and bad the ideology of The Lion King really is. So let's talk about the antagonists of the original Lion King, the Hyenas and Scar. I think that the creators of this movie intuitively understood a really important idea. That when you want to convince an audience that a fundamentally flawed idea is good, never explain with the rational what would be better served by the mystical. You're not going to logic your way into the conclusion that a hereditary monarchy filled with rulers who eat people and cast random groups out of their kingdom is a good thing, so don't even try it. Instead, simply justify the power of the ruling class through various visceral, emotional, and supernatural methods. And the film accomplishes this beautifully. Whatever you want to say about Scar, he's not a villain with deep motivations. His purpose is singular, become king by any means necessary, even if that means murdering your nephew and brother. Because of this, when we look at Scar, we don't see a character so much as a general force, a raw lust for power, a harbinger of chaos. And it is this mystical force that he exacts upon the world. When Scar does become king and lets the hyenas into the Pride Lands, everything goes south fast, but not in a way that the film cares to rationally explain to us. There is simply a drought, an expression of nature's destruction. Where is your hunting party? They're not doing their job. Scar, there is no food. The herds have moved on. No, you're just not looking hard enough. It's over. There is nothing left. An emotional representation of the fact that Mufasa and Simba are needed, that their rule is necessary and divine. But the 2019 Lion King seems to find all of this inadequate. The film decides to flesh out its antagonists more, to explain to the audience in a very logical way why the hyenas and Scar are so evil. And this choice had some interesting impacts on the way the Lion King delivered its messages. So let's look at the changes the film made to the hyenas. Rather than just being a nondescript mass of militant, goofy, evil animals as they were in the original, the hyenas in the 2019 film now have a sense of purpose and legitimacy. They're part of a serious nation that seems to rival the Pride Lands. They have an important feeling leader. Hyenas and lions have been at war since the beginning of time. What's more, the film offers us a supposedly rational reason why the hyenas are bad news. They eat too much, consume all the resources at their disposal because their bellies apparently cannot be filled. You fools have stripped your land of every living thing. Because a hyena's belly is never full. And from now on, the lions will eat after the hyenas. And they don't leave much behind. And watching all this stuff, hearing that a hyena's belly is never full, my first reaction is, what even is that? It just sounds made up and silly and vapid in the worst ways. And sure, the original film had the circle of life, which is also a very contrived idea, but at least it sounds nice. When Mufasa talks about the circle of life, the audience can immediately buy into it. After all, lions do eat antelope in real life, they do become grass when they die, you know, it sounds like it makes sense. But this? This just feels like a propagandistic rationalization, one that's made so much worse by the fact that I hear things that sound like it 
all the time in the real world. Hyenas' bellies are never full, so we have to keep them out and treat them terribly. The welfare queens just want to leech off the state. The Mexicans are parasitic invaders who will misuse our resources and take our livelihoods from us. It's a strikingly similar rhetoric, and there's good reason for that. If you're telling a story about subjugation and want to provide some rational justification for that act, painting the people you want to subjugate as genetically inferior and predisposed toward harmful behavior is probably your best bet. It's also incredibly gross, which, I'm guessing, is the reason why the original film just didn't go there. That movie tells us that hyenas are bad, but it doesn't linger on that fact. Doesn't force us to think about what that statement means in some logical way. But maybe more important than this, making the hyenas of the new film be these weird creatures incapable of controlling their appetites replaces any sense of evil or malice with incompetence. Suddenly, the problem with the hyenas isn't that they're immoral actors disrupting the beauty of nature through their very presence. No, it's just that they're like, bad at being animals, have a shitty nation, eat too much. That's really the heart of the problem. Surprisingly enough, Scar is given a similar treatment. Instead of being this enormous figure, fixated on kings and succession and power, now he's just weak and kinda pathetic. Seemingly, the main reason he wants to be king is that he's in love with Sarabi, Mufasa's wife. As you know, I have tremendous respect for the queen. And when he does take over the throne, he spends like all his time trying to get her to be his queen. Long ago, you chose Mufasa over me. But now there is a new king, so stop being so selfish. And not caring about overhunting because he's just a terrible leader. Now, I do see where the filmmakers were coming from with this. I mean, Scar is a bad leader in the original film. He's petty, vain, spiteful, doesn't move his pride to another place when the drought sets in. We have only one choice. We must leave Pride Rock. We're not going anywhere. Then you have sentenced us to death. But now, incompetence is all that the antagonists are. Scar's overhunting is apparently the explanation for why the drought happens. You're killing everything. Don't you see? There is nobody to challenge me. We can finally take whatever we want. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah. The hyenas, their boundless appetites and reckless ways, are the main people doing that hunting. And, compared to the original, this is all more realistic in some sense. Now we know why what's happening is happening. It's because of ineptitude, biologically ingrained selfishness, human or animal failure. But with this explanation, all we find is a terrible, shallow justification for why Simba should lead the Pride Lands. Because here, there is no real argument for why this monarchy is important. There's just a bunch of stooges who are terrible at their jobs. And although we might want to replace them, is there any good reason to replace them with this guy or this guy? What do they do? What meaningfully justifies their claim to the throne? See, when you take the mysticism and divinity away from Simba, take away the feeling that he represents a benevolent order enforced by nature itself, all you're left with is an unnecessary monarchy. Watching this movie, sure I want to get rid of Scar, but I don't have any particular attachment to Simba's power either. It doesn't seem so great. So, that's about it. My big problems with The Lion King 2019. And it feels necessary to ask the question, are all these changes good things? Like, it's weird to look at the old film and be like, wow, thanks for teaching my kid about the importance of subjugation, the beneficence of predators, the necessity of hereditary rule. Great job at doing that in the most beautiful, elegant way possible. Saying that feels weird and kinda off, right? So maybe it represents a positive change that the new film revealed, through both its aesthetic and its villains, just how silly and awful those ideas are. But 
I don't know if I could say that in good faith. The new Lion King is boring and awful and septic. It's not woke now. It doesn't meaningfully change the ideology of the original film. It's just a worse version of those ideas. One with less energy. One that doesn't carry its ideas nearly as well. All this to say, I'm not a politics robot, and if I'm sitting down to watch a movie that understands a ridiculous, often cruel power structure as an unquestioned good, I want it to do a good job at that. Sell me that experience. Make me believe it. And looking at the remake, I don't believe it. Not even for a second. So now it's time for my Patreon question of the week and outro and stuff, but first a word from our sponsors. Squarespace is a really easy way to start a website. Like, for me, I just wanted a simple website with ham, and I had all these images of ham on my computer, but I didn't know how to get them on. But you can just sort of drag them, drop them on, and then, you know, bim, bim, bum, boom, boom, look at all the ham! Seriously, it seems really easy to start a website with Squarespace, and you can get 10% off your first purchase if you use the coupon code BIGJOEL. So have fun with that and have a great time. So that's the video. Congratulations on watching the whole thing. Uh, thanks to the people who watched it. Thanks to my patrons. And now it's time for my Patreon question of the video. Joshless asks, do you believe sapient life exists somewhere else in the universe, and if so, do you think we'll ever meet them? As far as the first question is concerned, hell yeah, why wouldn't there be sapient life somewhere else in the universe? I don't know, seems likely to me. I'm not an alien, though. And then, will we ever meet them? I don't know. I probably won't. Will somebody in the future? Yes. Okay, bye. Kuna Matata, for the rest of the day. Kuna Matata, it means a passing phrase, oh yeah, it means no worries for the rest of your days, oh you do, 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 do. it's a problem free problem, it's a problem for me, oh Kuna Matata.